Do you have a sense of what happens if it gets to August and the business, like for whatever reason we've figured out, it really, really doesn't work? Cities are better and neighbourhoods are stronger with lots of great public space. There's not enough public space in some areas. If you're a community... We currently work in city making. I've been an urban designer for 15 years. At the moment, we do community engagement manually, and so it needs to be face-to-face -face or person-to-person, -person, and that's limiting. But by switching that into a tech interface and using big data out there, we can actually look at what's happening in other places without being limited by where we are. Some of them in here have the potential to do something really big and really amazing. So what it is, it's really a first place to go and to get advice. So we need your investment because I want this cat and the other three million cats and four million dogs in Australia to be happier and healthier through Vet Chat now. Thank you. But I think the only thing that's going to hold them back is themselves. When that came in, I felt sick. Ridiculous. Really? Not just, yeah. Just, yeah, I'm just telling you, I've just got to get over it. But I'm talking. The vision and the mission of these founders should be big. It should be something that occasionally, you know, terrifies them. I thought that I would be coming in building what I thought was right. And I realised being in this program, it's, it's, it's not that at all. It's changing all the time. Claire has the passion and she does what she does, but it'll get us so far. I was feeling a bit overwhelmed even in the boot camp. It's like I'm not sure where I say that's a searching trail. That is what brings the startup down. It's not the someone in my family is sick or I found another opportunity. Those are all internal reasons. It's the self-sabotage. What happens? It just doesn't work. Yeah at which point they would expect us to pivot and do something else. But if for some reason we don't have the capacity to do that mentally or whatever, what happens? So that is where that line is, right? It's a self-destructive thing that happens in your head of going, oh my God, I can't do this. I don't think we could walk away from this and let it go because I want to use this tool in my current work and we have clients every day that need this tool. Now, I want clarity on what happens if we, if we yeah. decide to give it up. Like, yeah. even if it's working and we decide to give it yeah. up, like, what happens then? Like... At night, I've always got this burning like feeling, I've got to do more. I think they're going to have moments where they're going to question, is this worth it? What is it I'm going to have to do? What is it I'm going to have to give up? What is it I'm going to have to focus on? And it's up to every individual to think about what it is they're willing to commit to that. Of course there are, you know, very real um, concerns around how you run a company like the one we're currently running, and then also start up a new business. And that's what we're trying to figure out at the moment. How do we um, resolve the fact that we've got these competing tensions and at the heart of it, what are we actually trying to get out of our careers and, and how could Neighbourlytics help us get there? How do you take a large organisation, direct it in times of change, but also help it get really, really effective outputs? You start thinking about this sort of culture and this sort of behaviour and this sort of process and building it in from, this, from day one. And then the second question that you have to answer is how am I going to pace myself to see if I'm getting there? We've really got to think about how do I strategically get there? How am I going to focus my time, my attention, my energy day by day on what really matters to actually help me achieve that vision and execute on it? Claire wants to learn. She's the first to say she's got to learn. She doesn't know everything, but she's just a sponge soaking everything up. So I really, like, she's passionate. It's not about what I want. It's about what works best and knowing and having it validated that that's the right step to go before. And I think that's something that um, I didn't think about as much in, until I've been in the program. Would you rather invest in A-Team with a B idea or, you know, or the other way around? So the idea is that you go with the A-Team because even if they're on the wrong path, um, or they sort of haven't got their validation right or they're moving in the wrong direction that they'll pick it up very quickly. We are advised not to just speak to people we know because then they just want to agree with us. Yeah. Like property economists. Yeah, yeah. Like cynics. Well, we need to speak yeah, to cynics. I think it's really important for these women to actually articulate the vision of, it, of what it is they want to achieve by the end of this program and by the end of the year. 
and not just to articulate that, but actually to write down and say, what are my objectives? Like, what do I need to do to get there? Let's start to mock up sort of the supply chain and the decision-making process in Mural. Where are they getting their data? Who are our competitors? How are they making the decisions? Go back over that process. God, I want to do it now. <laughs> You often find that the ones that are juggling a lot actually just know what they've got to do and they'll always get the work done. Whenever there's something that needs to be done, it's, you know, it's finished. We need to invest everything in this six months. There can be no stone left unturned. It's kind of exciting knowing that you're looking at the idea so closely and you're really getting it right. I did think it would potentially be better for work-life balance than what I was doing before and obviously that's completely wrong. I want to have my own hours and manage my own time and have the freedom and all of that and we're like guess what dude founders don't get any of that and if anything goes well you're not going to have any of that for five years. If you weren't passionate about what you were doing there is no way you would go into startup land that's for sure. Thanks Talia, this little girl on chat. because she's addressing something that's taboo. It makes preparing for death more complicated than ever. Because it's one thing to talk on how you're supposed to do things, but it's another thing to actually go and workshop it. Stop being humble. You guys are rock stars. Get out there and make some noise.